Hi, I'm Ryan Hansen. I'm the Director of Digital uh, Learning in the Davis School District. I'm going to take just a second to talk with you about, um, about what training for digital tools or technological tools looks like for us. Um, we'll, we'll talk philosophically why digital tools in the Davis School District. Uh, we'll talk how. How are we going to teach um, those things? How are we teaching those, those skills and those tools? Uh, and then how do we know once we've taught them? What are, what are our measures? So I'm going to share those with you. Thanks. Okay, let's talk about why. Um, why digital tools? Uh, it is our mission to um, personalize the, the learning experience, the teaching and learning experience for all learners in the Davis School District. So uh, in regards to professional development for adults, uh, we want to personalize the experience for them in addition to uh, helping them, modeling for them how to personalize the experience for students. Um, you can see here our definition of uh, personalized learning. And uh, we're going to show you where you can find that online and uh, how we make that available to uh, all teachers and all students and all families uh, associated with the Davis School District. Okay, this is our uh, district homepage. And if you were to click here on district, you'll get this drop down menu. Within the drop down menu, you'll see the uh, personalized learning standards based grading option. And if you were to click on that, uh, you'll get additional information about, uh, about what that means to us. But I also wanted to point out that if you were to click on parents and family within that drop down menu, you'll see that same uh, icon that, that you can click on that'll take you to, uh, to this next resource. Here is our personalized learning web page. And again, you can see the definition for personalized learning here. Uh, and this is a screenshot, so you can't scroll down, but we would encourage you to go to this site online and then scroll down from here. And um, below, down below, you would see additional resources, philosophical resources about what personalized learning uh, means to us, our standards-based grading initiative, um, but specifically, uh, there you would see a glossary of terms, um, and those terms, you know, we're establish establishing a common language as to, to uh, what these different definitions within personalized learning and also digital teaching and learning, what those terms mean to us. Um, but again, that's the, the web page there. This is a philosophical flowchart or model regarding personalization in our school district. Uh, it all begins here with standards. So uh, again, our purpose for existing is to help students acquire the essential skills and knowledge that come in the form of standards. And we want each of our students to have a personalized experience with us. Uh, in regards to how they acquire those standards. Um, but personalized, if we really, the, again, the, the student is at the center of this experience. And if we really do personalize uh, their experience, then that's going to manifest itself through the choices that they have. First choice that they'll experience is what pathway uh, will they choose uh, to follow that will help them to acquire those standards. Um, once they've chosen a pathway, then they will also have options. Second option would be how quickly do they move uh, along that pathway. And the third option would be where do they choose to engage us from. Uh, but we can't do any of those things if we haven't clearly uh, described or defined um, what, standards, uh, uh, what standards we have for those students. Um, and once we've clearly defined the standards, we need to, to dis describe how uh, we'll assess their progress towards those standards. Um, we want to provide them with authentic forms of assessment in which they provide us artifacts that demonstrate their proficiency. And so once we can do that, then we're going to let them progress at their own pace. Uh, as they do that through courses, um, we'll have profiles of proficiency for each course. And then those courses, the proficiency of, of um, the proficiency profile for each course, those come together to create a profile of what a graduate in our system should look like. Um, not only 
would this learner necessarily be a student learner, but it could also be a professional. And we want to model uh, personalized learning for our professionals in addition to providing that experience for our students. But none of that happens if we don't effectively use digital tools. And that's why we need a plan to teach uh, the use of digital tools and uh, the effective use of technology in our school district. Okay, so we've established the why for digital tools. Uh, what digital tools? Let's talk about that. Which ones are the big tools that we use to help to personalize the experience for students? Well, first of all is our website. Um, our website is our primary form of uh, communication with our parents and also with our teachers. So anything we need our teachers or our students to be able to know and do, we want to provide those resources on our website. Second one is our student information system. Uh, for us, it's a product that we made here in the Davis School District. It's called Encore. Uh, but the window between Encore uh, student information and, and uh, parents, their access to, to that information is through MyDSD. And that's where we're going to communicate student achievement, um, but also uh, other things, uh, manage managerial information regarding school lunch and, and uh, payment of fees bus schedules, all those things um, happen through MyDSD. Um, our big collaborative tool in the Davis School District is Microsoft. Uh, we use Teams a lot. Well, Teams is new to us, but, uh, but we're using it more and more each day. Uh, things for student voice products within the suite for student voice, Flipgrid, Stream. Uh, we want to be able to use those tools to provide students with opportunities or options in, uh, in creating authentic forms of assessment, uh, ways that they can show us that they, they're achieving the standards that, uh, that are essential. Um, we want to use a learning management system. We want all our teachers to use learning management systems. For us, the primary learning man management system is Canvas. Uh, Canvas, we don't just do Canvas for Canvas and we don't just use digital tools just to say we use digital tools, uh, but Canvas increases the organization and planning for the teacher or the teacher teams that use it. Uh, it provides almost immediate or it can provide almost immediate feedback to the learner uh, and also to the instructor. You know, how are kids doing in their class so that this, the instructor can make essential adjustments and students can make adjustments. Um, but also through Canvas, we can provide uh, content and curriculum and resources anytime and anywhere to all of our students and their families. Uh, we also have some tools for digital content, um, Edgenuity for high school, Edmentum for elementary. Um, and we have other tools that uh, we use as well, but these are our primary tools. So it's not enough just for us to have a website, um, but we want to track uh, data within the web website. How's it being used? Um, and specifically within the website, what are people using? And then of course that drives uh, the professional development that we need to create and uh, the skills that we need to help teachers to acquire. But we can see here that in the month of September, um, that was the total views on our website. Um, most people, hit that website and then they might have bounced off to another page and when they did bounce off to another page most of the time they bounced to canvas so we like those numbers and again we track all the pages within our website to see who's going where uh, so that we can provide um, the right kind of professional development okay so we've talked about the what we've uh, established what tools we need our our teachers to be fluent in their use with uh, let's talk about how. How do we teach them or help them develop that fluency? Uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about is here the content or the instruction that we need to provide to them. Uh, of course, that comes in the form of PD, professional development. Uh, but then we also want to model that for them. Uh, and then we need to provide them with some uh, OJT, some on-the-job on training and uh, coaching. Um, uh, but first of all, <clears throat> the department responsible primarily the department primarily responsible for uh, for our teachers using technology effectively is our technology integration center. 
here's their website. I encourage you to click on that and see who's in that department. Um, but again, they're going to provide that content and we want that content to be accessible through the website. So 24 seven accessibility. Uh, we need our, our district admin, especially to model the effective use of these tool, tools. Uh, and then the coaching, the coaching model that, that we have is going to come, uh, it'll come to the schools in the form of their school technology specialist or their STS. Uh, again, there's the link to that program. I'd encourage you to take a look at that. But our model, um, we have one STS for every two elementary and junior high school students. So it's a two to one ratio. And then our, in our high schools, we have one STS or a coach uh, for every um, high school. So let's talk more specifically about how we get support to uh, teachers, departments, and schools. Uh, first, the first way we would do that is through what we refer to as our hub of professional learning. Um, that's got all our online curriculum there. It's sorted. Teachers can search it. Um, here's the website. We'd encourage you to go there and take a look at it. There's also a link off our quick links on our, our homepage. Uh, there you'll also find what we call at your service. Uh, that is that is training, face-to-face -face training we make available to departments and also to schools, uh, but it's got the trainer uh, that's listed there and uh, the topic uh, for, for, for teachers and departments to access if they need it and want to set that up. Uh, for information for PD regarding our student information system in Encore, uh, you can find that training within Encore itself. Um, the technology department, Kathy Johnson, has set that up there. So there's videos within the software that uh, help teachers know how to use um, specific ele elements within the software. But because it is uh, specific to our student information system and it's not something we would make available to parents and students, it's been tucked within the student information system itself. Um, we're encouraging our teachers to go to uh, Midas Digital Badges, and if they go to this link here, they can see all of the badges that have been built for them. Uh, but Darren Kinnett is, uh, he is with the Davis School District and received a grant from the state to help to build that. But we also want our teachers to be out and to uh, to be engaged in our in the Microsoft Educator community. We have two showcase Microsoft showcase schools within our district. Uh, we're also we have a plan um, in place um, and stipend money to provide for teachers this spring so that as they become a member of the Microsoft Education community we'll be able to pay them a stipend to do that. Okay it's one thing for me to be able to tell you that we're going to provide online uh, courses to our teachers but we are regularly uh, totaling the data that comes from our use of those courses that are, can be found on the on the professional learning hub. Uh, since September of last year, we've had 1,660 teachers complete uh, just some of those courses. That doesn't include the totals for for all of those courses. But you can see where here where our teachers uh, focused and and the courses that they completed. Again, those are mostly on their own. Uh, through a personalized online learning experience. Okay, this is the same data, but um, but these are the courses that have been completed since September 1st of 2019. So we've had 365 of those courses completed so far this year. So that's a pretty good uh, tra trajectory, um, but that's that data. If you look closely at the last slide, um, the most completed course this year regarding um, professional development, online professional development, has been about Canvas. And uh, here, this tells you the or shows the the use of Canvas by our teachers over time. You can see here that we're approaching 2,000, and that's a high mark for us. And so we like that trend. Uh, this is student use of Canvas, so individual Canvas users from our student population, and we're here. And again, that's a, an all-time high mark for us, so, so we like those trends and we track it uh, monthly.
this uh, this slide here simply shows us our active usership of Microsoft Teams just for September. Uh, but we look at this every month as well. Um, we think that uh, by looking at my, the use of Microsoft Teams, it also tells us, uh, gives us a rough idea as to, to how those some of those other Microsoft products are being used as well. Uh, but we're looking at this number here and, and looking to see that it's it's growing. We're also tracking uh, Nearpod use. Uh, so we're not only tracking the use of, uh, of the tools that we mentioned uh, previously, but Nearpod is another big tool that we use. Uh, you can see that our Nearpod usage, um, and we're also training on the use of Nearpod. So we had a big jump in the number of times students joined a Nearpod uh, just in September of this year. Um, so again, these are just evidences of uh, the training that we're providing and, and how our teachers are, and students are responding to the training that's being made available to them. Regarding the modeling of these tools by district administration, this is just a screenshot here of the team used uh, by our superintendency for, um, for the superintendent's executive um, staff. And uh, you can see that uh, Teams is used extensively for all these purposes here. Um, we're also using um, Canvas with all of our math, English, science secondary teachers. And they all have the opportunity to participate in a, a state funded uh, grant program where they're being provided professional development about the use of Canvas and specifically for competency based education. So those are just two examples as to how district administration is using uh, these tools. This is a list that provides evidence of our, our uh, school technology specialist program. This is just a screenshot of a much larger page. If you want to see the, the larger page, uh, go ahead and click on that link and it'll tell, take you to the complete list for our school technology specialists. We ask our, two, our school's technology specialists to do three things in a school. Uh, first of all, we ask them to, to know the devices that are in the building. Uh, so uh, they are the keepers of the inventory, but then they also engage with the administrative team in creating a uh, effective technology plan for the school so that we make sure we're acquiring the right tools. The second thing we ask them to do is to make sure those tools are being used uh, at a high level of uh, capability. So if, if um, the tools have the capacity to do this for the school, but the usage is only here. It's the SDS's responsibility to see that that uh, gap is bridged. Of course, we do that through professional development. They don't have to do all the professional development, but they're responsible to see that it gets done. Uh, and then the third thing that we ask them to do um, is to coach. We've asked them all to, we've asked them to be in every teacher's classroom this fall uh, to look for some specific things in the classroom and then provide specific feedback to the teacher uh, regarding suggestions for um, more effective use of technology so that the teacher becomes more effective as the teacher. So we've talked about uh, our vision for personalization and the use of digital tools to accomplish that uh, vision and mission. Uh, we've talked about the model for what that looks like. Um, We've talked about the big tools um, that we use to accomplish that and how we measure those. Uh, but our model for school in innovation is, uh, is what we call uh, school. We want school driven innovation and uh, district supported. So those that know best how their schools are doing and have created plans to meet the needs of their school communities are our principals, our building administrators. Uh, and it's our mission at the district level to support the innovation that they need for them to be successful uh, at their level. So our overall measure is our, of course, our graduation measures and uh, other district-wide measures, um, but it's our responsibility with technology to support those. So thanks again for taking a look at us and we're always welcome. Uh, we always welcome suggestions and we're in a state of constant improvement and lots to do. So thank you.